Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of The Monogram Murders by Sophie Hanna. So this is the first in Sophie Hanna's Hercule Poirot, like, reboot, I guess. She got signed off from the uh, Agatha Christie estate to work on it. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end, so... Dane reads... It's too late. I am already dead, or I shall be soon. Hercule Poirot's quiet supper is interrupted when a young woman confides to him that she is about to be murdered. She is terrified, but begs Poirot not to find and punish her killer. Once she is dead, she insists, justice will have been done. Later that night, Poirot learns that three guests at the fashionable Bloxham Hotel have been murdered, a cufflink placed in each one's mouth. While Poirot struggles to connect the bizarre pieces of the puzzle, the murderer prepares a hotel bedroom for a fourth victim. So, we'll go ahead and get started. So we get this during one of his interviews. I'll say this for Jenny, she's a tea girl, so she's got some sense in her head at least. A tea girl? That's right. Fee sniffed at Poirot's coffee puck. All you that drinks coffee when you could be drinking tea want your brains looking at, if you ask me. Mm, I think it's the other way around, mate. So it's the story's told by Edward Catchpole, not much older than 30, 32 to be precise. So he's younger than me, which makes me feel old. And he's trying to compose crosswords, he's trying to be a cruciverbalist, which is the, the word for someone who creates crosswords. We get this little exchange, which I enjoyed. They were good friends, they knew each other well. Of course they were good friends, Lazari announced to the room. They ate a meal together. Many people eat meals every day with those they dislike profoundly, said Poirot. Yeah, like people who work in offices. And then we get this little line, nobody had anything more to tell us, it turned out that if you asked a hundred people, you were likely to be disappointed. Which made me think of like, Family Fortunes and Pointless and other game shows where they ask a uh, hundred people. And then what's his name, Catchful, uh, he says, I often drink tea cold, I quite like it. Fara raised his eyebrows, if I did not know you to be an honest man, I should not believe it possible. Cold tea, degulas. Um... I drink tea and coffee cold, but only because I forget about it, and then I'm like, well, it'd be a shame to waste it. And Catchful says, here, thankfully, no hot water bottle with a knitted cover had been laid out for my use. I can't bear the things. Even the sight of them irks me. The warmest thing in any bed should always be a person, in my opinion. Well, I'm going to have to disagree with you there, Catchpool, mate. And Poirot meets an artist, Nancy Duquesne. Um, and he asks if all the paintings on the walls are by her. And she says, oh no, very few of these are mine. I buy as many as I sell, which is as it should be, I think. Art is my passion. It is one of mine also, Poirot told her. Looking at nothing but one's own pictures would be unbearably lonely. I always think when I hang a painting by another artist that it's like having a good friend on my wall. And we get a reference, Poirot references Hastings. He says, I have a very good friend that I have not spoken of to you. Hastings is his name. Often I entreat him to use his little grey cells, but I know that there will never be a match for mine. We get a reference to the Tempest. Hell is empty and all the devils are here. Uh, which is a great little quote. And also, we kind of deal with the idea of suicide being a sin, and so people are kind of trying to find their way around committing a sinful suicide. We get this just great little line here. Maybe then, even in my unhappiness, I still understood the notion that my life might improve. Sadness is different from despair. I suppose it is. So yeah, that's all I tabbed out from the monogram murders. It is very much, it feels like Sophie Hannah finding her feet on this one and then she kind of gets more into the swing of things. I know that my buddy Charlie Heathcote here on uh, Booktube, he was unimpressed by this, as was his mother. Um, she, neither of them could believe that the, the, the kind of the murder or whatever was so easy to figure out. Now in my case, I don't really read books like this trying to figure out who did it and why, so I guess I wasn't kind of hampered by that, but I can certainly see their point. The writing was pretty good and the characterization was pretty good, I guess the, just the plot was a bit nuts, unnecessarily so. But I still gave The Monogram Murders by Sophie Hannah a 3.5 out of 5, it was okay. Um, you don't have to read these new Sophie Hannah Poirot books in order, so I would probably skip this one and read a different one, and then maybe come back to this. It was nice though to meet, uh, to read about Poirot meeting uh, Catchpool. That was probably like, the main highlight of it for me. So yeah, the Monogram Murders by Sophie Hannah. So there we have it, that's what I made of this book. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought. If you read this one, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.